What's up, fantasy managers? I want to talk about the big guys up front because they should be able to eat their cake too. The offensive line is important for your fantasy players to score points. I have the week nine offensive line report that you should know about. I know you're interested, so stick around for seven seconds. This information can help you decide your own fantasy tiebreakers, who to start, who to sit. By understanding who has the advantage in the trenches gives you advantage over your league mates. I have three players you want to target. I have three players you want to avoid in week nine. All this information is on PFF. I subscribe to it so you don't have to, and I will relay this information to you starting with my notes right now. Now, the first offensive line that I want to get into is the Colts versus the Vikings. The Colts offensive line owns a 84.6 pass blocking grade, the best mark in the league while allowing just a 21.2% pressure rate, which is the sixth best mark in the league as well. And for the Vikings defensive line, they just cannot get to the quarterback. Even though they blitz more than anybody else in the league, apparently they're just not good at the blitz because they're only ranked 26 as a pass rush grade. So in the end, this is a win for the Colts offensive line. So who does this benefit? One person this does benefit is Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is the quarterback for the Colts going from here on out. And when he is the quarterback, everybody on the Colts gets an upgrade. And when they can keep him nice and clean in the pocket, sorry, my son is going to be watching me do this, and I can hear him chiming in every now and then. If they can keep, if they can keep Joe Flacco upright, his clean pocket completion percentage is sixty nine point eight percent. That is eleventh best in the NFL. But that is the, the number one person that we are trying to target for this, and the number one person that you want to start from this game and put into your lineup to light up your roster is wide receiver Josh Downs. And the reason why is because when Joe Flacco gets time, the person that he loves to throw the ball to is Josh Downs. So on non-pressure dropbacks, Downs has seen an elite 36.1% target rate, which not only leads the team, but ranks fourth in the entire league across all positions. Downs has finished as a PPR wide receiver 8, 17 and 14 in games when Joe Flacco was under center. And this week could be more of the same in a favorable matchup. So two weeks ago, we said the same thing because of this, because Joe Flacco, because when he gets time, he loves throwing the ball to Josh Downs. We were saying to target Josh Downs. And what did he do? He scored 19 points against Tennessee. He had seven receptions, nine targets, 66 yards, and a touchdown. So moving forward, Joe Flacco is likely going to be the guy for the rest of the season. You want to try to get Joe Flacco. You want to try to get Josh Downs. And if you listen to our show, you would have known this before Joe Flacco was even the starter because there were signs that he was going to become the starter to try to target these two players. If you did that, this is going to be great for your lineup for the rest of the season. Now, the second game that we want to look into, we want to look into the Packers versus the Detroit Lions. The Packers offensive line owns a 83.8 pass blocking grade, the second best mark this season, and is allowing just a 22.3% pressure rate, and that is eighth best in the league. In two weeks without Aiden Hutchinson, the Lions defensive line ranks just the 21st in pass rush grade at 62.6 and 27th in quick pressure rate at 15.4%. And this is huge because the person who was leading the league in pressure rate by, it was 35%, was Aiden Hutchinson. So with him out of the lineup, him gone for the rest of the season, that puts a big damper on the Lions defensive line. And of course, once again, the quarterback can benefit from this, Jordan Love. His pressure completion percentage is 30%, which is 38 overall. But if you get the guy a clean pocket, his completion percentage is 67.9%. That is 24th overall, which is a huge gap from being pressure. So got to keep this guy up. You got to keep him clean if he plays. But the number one person that this actually targets or has benefit for is, well, the person who benefits the most from this is Jaden Reed, a player who's fifth in yards after catch eighth in yards per route run, and fourth in yards per target, the last two games have not been great for him. On non-pressure dropbacks, Reed has seen a high-end target rate of 24.6%, which is significantly higher than his 9.4% target rate on pressure dropbacks that ranks sixth on the team. Reed's 2.48 yards per route run on non-pressure dropbacks also ranks 14th among all wide receivers in the league. The Lions are also allowing the third most fantasy points per game to wide receivers, so that already gives a boost to Jaden Reed. Jordan Love is questionable entering this week with a growing injury. So if he's unable to play, everything is going to be downgraded for this week when it comes to Jaden Reed. And I just got a notification that he is now a game-time decision. So before you're going to put this guy in your lineup to light up your rosters, keep an eye out for Jordan Love and see if he's actually going to play in the game or not. And the final game that we're going to look into is the Carolina Panthers offensive line versus the New Orleans Saints defensive line. The Panthers rank just slightly above average in terms of run blocking grade of 64.7 this season. The Saints defensive line has allowed 2.1 rushing yards 
B4 contact, the worst mark in the league while ranking 31st and run defense grade 45.1% this season. It's been a long five to six weeks when I was gambling on Saquon Barkley, but I said to sit him going against the New Orleans Saints run defense. That's no longer the case. Right now, what it's saying that you want to actually target this defense when you want to run against them because they are allowing two yards before the running back is even getting touched. That's what you want as a runner. So who is this benefit? Well, it's going to benefit Chuba Hubbard. Now, with Chuba Hubbard being the one to benefit from this game, the first thing I thought about was Jonathan Brooks because I went and looked at Jonathan Brooks's projection points, and he was projecting five points at one time. But now when you look at the updated news, it's saying that he is likely to not play this week, so we're going to have to wait another week for Jonathan Brooks. And so Chuba Hubbard, his running metrics are not great, but one thing that he's doing great at is snap share. He's 10th overall. Opportunity share, he's 15th overall. He's 9th in carries. He's 11th in targets. Yeah, he's 17th. In uh, red zone touches, that's all great. Rushing yards, fifth. Receptions, eighth. Yeah, these are all great for a running back when there's no other running back out there to take touches from him. So because Jonathan Brooks is not here, Chuba Hubbard is going to be the one to benefit from this. And even though he came off a poor week last week, this is a good bounce back game for him. When provided at least one rushing yard before contact, Hubbard has earned a 91.0 rushing grade, the 11th best among 49 qualifying running backs. Hubbard's first down plus touchdown rate, 35.2%, is above average under those same conditions and qualifying running backs. So even after a quiet week, there's optimism that he could have a bounce back week because the New Orleans Saints defense is not good at run blocking. So I would feel comfortable for putting this guy in your lineup for a potential to line up your points. Yo, if you made it this far and if you're enjoying the information I'm giving you about the offensive line report for week nine, then please hit the subscribe, press the like. It goes a long way. We have a goal to reach 1,500 subscribers before the season's over. And we can't do it without you guys, the zoners. We appreciate all you guys. Anything and everything goes a long way. Thank you for watching. So let's look at the other side of this, right? Let's look at the offensive line that we want to avoid. You know, let's try to look at these players that we want to ice out of our lineups. And let's start with game number one, which is Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. The Dolphins off offensive line ranks around league average in terms of pass blocking grade 71.7 this season. The Buffalo Bills defense line ranks seventh in pass rush grade as a unit this season at 74.8, while also ranking top 10 in quick pressure rate at 25%. And this is very important because the Bills was actually on this episode last week when they said to avoid Geno Smith because of this exact reason was they were 10, they were top 10 in quick pressure rate. And then how did Geno Smith do well. He had an interception and didn't throw for any touchdowns, so he didn't do great. So who are we going to try to avoid? Well, the Buffalo Bills have had the Miami Dolphins number for quite some time now. But if we're going to look at the wide receivers, like let's start with Tyreek Hill. You're going to start Tyreek Hill either way, right? Because he's your stud and he has 40% of the team air yard share, which is, that's incredible. And his deep targets, he's 11th in the league. No matter what, you're going to play him because he has a potential to actually score you points. But so the one person that you were trying to avoid is Jalen Waddle, And it hasn't been a great year for Jalen Waddle. He's actually averaging, let's say, 8.3 points a game. That is 61st overall for wide receivers. This was one of those situations where it's like Tua went out and kept a hold of him, maybe, because you're like, Tua's going to come back. Things are going to get better. Tua came back last week. Didn't get better for Waddle. He actually had a huge drop near the goal line. It hit him right between the numbers when he dropped it. But what PFF is saying is, on pressure dropbacks, Waddle ranked 71st among 107 qualifying wide receivers and and tight ends and target rate at 10.5 percent which is also fifth on the team waddle's target rate of 19.6 percent on non-pressure dropbacks is a pretty big difference so some of waddle's low production can be explained behind an average offensive line the bills are also allowing the fifth fewest fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position which adds to waddle's fantasy value concern for week nine. So when Tua gets pressured, he does not throw the ball to Jalen Waddle. And he's expected to get a lot of pressure this game. So this is a player, Jalen Waddle, that you want to try to ice out for week nine. All right, now for game number two, we got the Chargers versus the Browns. The Chargers offensive line ranks just 23rd in pass blocking grade at 63.5. This season, allowing a knockdown rate that sacks plus quarterback hits of 9.8%. That is the eighth worst mark in the league. The Cleveland Browns defensive line owns the highest pressure rate at 41.9% and the highest quick pressure rate, 34.9%, for the fifth best pass rush grade, 77.5 in the league. They do got Miles Garrett on the team. Miles Garrett, before Aiden Hutchinson went out for the year, was number two in pressure rate at 31%. 
So he's going to be in the quarterback's face. And who does that impact? Well, it impacts the wide receivers. But you're not likely starting a lot of wide receivers from the Chargers. Maybe Lad McConkley. He had a huge game last week. And you could probably have a pretty decent game this week. But the person that we're going after is Justin Herbert. And if you followed this show in the offseason, you would have known not to get Justin Herbert, not to draft Justin Herbert. You probably don't even have him on your team. You plan on never starting him. But... There are teams on by this week. Russell Wilson, out of there. Brock Purdy, out of there. And so if there's a chance that you are looking for somebody to stream this week, if you have one of those quarterbacks that are out, and you come across Justin Herbert on your waiver wire, leave him there. One of the concerns for Herbert this week is dealing with the pressure that the Browns defensive line can create. As Herbert ranks 23rd in passing grade when under pressure at 45.9, this poor grade has come from a high rate of turnover-worthy plays when under pressure, as a 6% turnover-worthy play rate ranks as the sixth worst mark in the NFL. Herbert can still perform well in NFL terms, but when it comes to fantasy football, there's better options out there, hopefully in week nine. And the last game that we're gonna talk about is the Cowboys offensive line versus the Atlanta Falcons. Wow, the Cowboys have come a long way when we're talking about offensive lines to avoid. The Cowboys offensive line has generated just a 0 0.9 rushing yards before contact per attempt, which ranks 28th. While they have managed just a 62 Run blocking grade, which ranks 21st. The Falcons' defensive line ranks 14th in run defense grade at 66.4, but has allowed just 1.1 rushing yards before contact per attempt. That's the seventh best in the league. So when you're running the ball, the Cowboys' offensive line can't get any push. They are getting bullied out the offensive line. They are losing the battle of the trenches, so the run game is not there. So obviously, who's this effect? It affects Rico Dowd. And of course, this sucks for him because this is a guy that actually the last three games that he's played – he have scored 12, 18, and 10 points. It looks like that he was actually coming on. Then after the bye week, he probably ate some bad crabs or something because he felt an illness, and he missed an opportunity to play against the 49ers, so he set that out. They're saying that he's going to be playing in this game, but yeah, PFF is saying to avoid this guy. When contacted two yards or fewer from the line of scrimmage, Dowd is averaging just 2.6 yards per carry, 34th among 62 qualifying running backs. His first down plus touchdown rate, of 7.7% in those same circumstances ranks 52nd among the same 62 qualifying running backs. The Falcons are also among the 10 best teams at preventing fancy points per game to the running back position. So PFF is saying to avoid this guy, to ice him out of your lineups. And I get it. I understand that. He's on my bench. I don't plan on starting him this week. But if you have no other choice or if you want to take a risk, there is still a possibility. And the reason why I say that is because Rico Dowd is a pass-catching running back. He could definitely catch the ball out of the backfield. Dak Prescott is at top of the league at passing attempts per game. I believe there's going to be a lot of passing in this game. It's going to be like a shootout. The over-under is 51.5, so there's a expected points to be scored in this game. Even though the Falcons are pretty good in the running game, they have given up the fourth most receptions to running backs this season. So there is a chance. If you have to play him, there is a chance, but it's a low chance, and you probably want to keep this guy on your bench. I want to do some quick hits, some quick information, some games that you want to be a part of in the passing game. And this one here is saying Carolina. Not sure if I want to be part of that game with Bryce Young, but Carolina has a 40% passing advantage. They've only allowed 25% pressure rate, which has turned into 14% uh sacks while the Saints defensive line has a pressure rate of 28 percent and have converted into sacks 12 percent of the time that's not really good but i'll tell you this even with deontay johnson gone here let me show you this the the saints here they are going to be without marshall and Lattimore, and all this right here 0 0.33 0 0.36 0 0.40 those are all saints wide uh cornerbacks and they're all that's how much points they are giving up fantasy points per route run 33 37 40 that's not good that is not great at all. So right now, what are we looking over here? We got Xavier Leggett and Jalen Coker. If you want to get crazy and start them, do it. But honestly, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to start anybody with Bryce Young as my quarterback. Secondly, a game right underneath that, the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears are allowing 29% pressure, and that's converting to 17% of the time, which is kind of high. But the Arizona defensive line has a pressure rate of 26%, which is even lower than the New Orleans Saints, 28%. But their sack conversion rate is 13%. That's below average. But the Cardinals quarterbacks, 0 0.29, 0 0.32, 0 0.14. That's not really great. They got a pretty good uh, slot cornerback. It looks like in Garrett Williams, but he's going to be covering Keen Allen. But Roma Dunze here, right? Am I reading that right? Roma Dunze is going to be covered by somebody who allows 0 .32 fantasy points per round one, which is pretty great. So Caleb Williams is kind of up and down if you want to roll the dice on that. They have a 31% pass advantage. Now I'm going to look at a couple games that have the highest running advantages of the week. 
And the first game is the Kansas City offensive line against Tampa Bay's defensive line. Kansas City has a 35% run advantage in this game. They have uh, 1.33 yards before contact. That's actually kind of a little bit above average. And the Tampa Bay have allowed 1.47 yards before contract. That is below average. That is not good in, for any type of run defense. So obviously you can't run on Tampa Bay's defense. And they've actually given up 15 running plays inside the five that has been converted into touchdowns 40% of the time. What I'm seeing there is Kareem Hunt. Let's go right underneath it here. And we got the Los Angeles Rams off its line versus Seattle's defensive line. The Rams earned 1.42 yards before contact. That's above average. While Seattle is allowing 1.49 yards before contact and that is below average so that is great for Kyron Williams and look 13 percent they've run 13 plays inside the five or they've ran the ball 13 times inside the five and converted to touchdowns 54 percent of the time and on Seattle's defense they have allowed 17 runs inside the five and it's been converted to a touchdowns 35 percent of the time Kyron Williams once again should have another great game in this game against Seattle <clears throat> okay now I want to check out games that you probably want to steer clear from when it comes to the passing game or the running game. And we're going straight back to the Tampa Bay, Kansas City game, where it looks like Tampa Bay is at a negative 20. So they're at a disadvantage when it comes to the passing game. They're allowing 27% pressure rate, 12% conversion into sacks. I mean, it's not bad, right? But Kansas City, look at this, Kansas City. Their defensive line gets a pressure rate of 35% of the time, which is turned into sack 14% of the time. So they're just saying that this is going to overpower, which I, I kind of see it. And also their secondary is pretty damn good. When I go to this page and look at the secondary fancy points per route run for the Kansas City Chiefs, you got Trey McDuffie, 0. 0.18. Joshua Williams, 0. 0.13. Their worst cornerback is their slot receiver who gives up 0. 0.40. Remember, we were looking at teams earlier, and their cornerbacks were giving up 0. 0.3 fantasy points per route one, which is good. But the Kansas City Chiefs, most of them, two out of the three, they actually hold them under 2, 0. 0.2 fantasy points per route run. So it's a definitely tough matchup for Tampa Bay, especially without Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. But what you do... One thing that you do against the Chiefs, you stream tight end. So Kate Otten should have a good game. Now with game number two, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line against the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line. Jacksonville allows 23% pressure rate, and that is converted into sacks 19% of the time. I believe that is the highest. While Philadelphia pressure rate is 31%, and it's converted to sacks 16% of the time. And I, from my understanding, the, the Jaguars just also traded away one of their best linemen within the last couple of weeks. So... They also got no one to throw the ball to. Parker Washington might be somebody you want to look into for this game. Evan Ingram should maybe do well, but other than that, staying away from all Jaguars. Yeah. Now let's finish this quick hits with two games with disadvantages in the run game. And the first game is the New England Patriots at Tennessee Titans. The New England Patriots offensive line, they only allow 0.96 yards before contact on the ground. That's horrible. While the Tennessee Titans are only allowing 1.27, that's around average to below average. So the running game here, I mean, we saw what Mondre Stevenson did last week. He averaged like 2.4 yards per carry, 20 attempts for like 48 yards and two touchdowns against the Jets. So he just, you know, volume alone, he did pretty well. He might need that again this week, volume alone, especially if uh, Drake May is not playing. I have Mondre Stevenson as my sit of the week for running back. So I expect the Patriots run game to be held in check for this. And the last game I want to talk about is the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line against the Raiders defensive line. The Bengals are earning 1.26 yards before contact. That's kind of like average to below average. The Raiders defensive line is allowing 1.25 yards before contact, but it looks like the number's within the five. So the Bengals have had 13 rushes inside the five, and it's only been converted into a touchdown 38% of the time, while the Raiders inside the five have allowed 15 rushes but have only allowed 33%. So when they get into goal line mode, they're, they stiffen up some. So the Raiders goal line defense is better than the Bengals goal line offense and i also believe zach moss you might want to keep an eye on him from my understanding that he's not practicing a lot this week but chase brown you know he catches balls out of the backfield but the Bengals being having a disadvantage of minus 22 in the run game this could be something to really look into that maybe if you had a better option other than just chase brown look for somebody else that's a wrap for the offensive line report in week nine now you know which three players to target which three players to avoid plus now you have more information from games you want to be a part of and games that you want to stay away from all right, now for a recap from week eight. So Baker Mayfield, you wanted to target. Even without his two wide receivers, he still scored 24 points. Also target Jordan Mason, but he went out with an injury. So Isaac Arendo came in, and he only had 14 rushes for 85 yards and a touchdown, 18 points. He did well. The other person was Dewan Jennings that you were supposed to target, but he ended up not playing. 
A player you were supposed to avoid was Geno Smith. He had seven points. A tight end you were supposed to avoid, Pat Fairmuth. He got three points. The Giants running back you were supposed to avoid as well because they were supposed to be cutting into each other's roles, but that did not happen. Tyrone Tracy had 20 carries for 145 yards and a touchdown, 23 points. So that one was missed. Overall, it was four out of five, not including Jawan Jennings, who did not play. Every Friday night, Tyler and I do a live rankings show and answer questions from the chat. If you want to know where your players ranked at, click this video here and you'll see if your players was ranked high or low. I'll talk to you in that video. Deuces.